So when it comes to older computers, generally speaking, I just stick to DOS. However, recently I have been trying to branch out a little bit into more of the European market. The ZX Spectrum, the Amiga, and the Amstrad CPC to be exact. The Amstrad CPC specifically has kind of caught my attention. The Amstrad CPC, short for Color Personal Computer, was a series of 8-bit home computers produced by Amstrad between 1984 and 1990. It was designed to compete with the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum and being successful in its own right until later in its lifespan. The Amstrad CPC was primarily used in the United Kingdom, France, Spain, and German-speaking parts of Europe. There isn't too much power behind the CPC, but there is over several thousand games available, which makes this one of a more unique systems, and you can probably find something for everyone. Hi, my name is Brad, and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, I'll show you how to get the confusing <laughs> Amstrad CPC up and running through LaunchBox. So first things first, it is time to add your games to LaunchBox. So I have my games here in my Amstrad CPC folder right here, Amstrad CPC. They're labeled with a .dsk file extension. But since I'm adding the whole folder, I don't really need to filter out any saves or extra stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and go to tools, import, ROM files, we're going to go to next, add folder, and then I'm going to navigate to where I have my emulators and then the Amstrad CPC and then my games. And we're going to click OK. We're going to click next platform for imported ROMs. We're going to hit the drop down box and we're going to go to the Amstrad CPC next where it says choose emulator let's hit add and let's add the caprice forever emulator so this link will be in the description below i have a a google translated link that will be in the description this site is normally in french and personally i can't read french but right at the top is a caprice forever link go ahead and click that link download the emulator to where you would like it and make sure to check out this page there's a lot here like if you are another operating systems or if you have handhelds that you want to play some of this stuff on and keep in mind we're not covering those systems but you, you know keep an open mind if you do want to play on some of those other systems another website that will be invaluable to getting around with your computer and this is really what broke through for me. I was adding and trying to get the system to work. And this was the site that kind of really spearheaded that for me because this shows how to use a lot of the commands very specifically. So read through this if you want a little bit of help. Now this is for real Amstrad machines. So some of this may not be applicable uh, like the CPC 472 uh, commands or anything related to a 472. Um, but this website really was invaluable for me in order to uh, get things up and running. So this will also be in the description below. So go ahead and add the emulator name, Caprice Forever, emulator application path. Go ahead and hit browse and navigate to the caprice.exe. In the associated platforms, double click the empty space, which would be at the top. Add in the Amstrad CPC. Make sure that you spell it the same way. Make sure you spell it the same way that you did on the previous step in the ROM import screen. And then check the default emulator box. So where it showed in uh, the associated platform, make sure that it uh, matches the name that you put in here, which is the default emulator name. We click next, use the files in their current location. We're going to check the Wikipedia box as well. And the LaunchBox Games database box is already pre-checked. But of course, we want to use that. Next, next, it's going to log you in and parse Emo Movies, which Emo Movies actually has manuals and video and some images for the Amstrad CPC. I was actually pleasantly surprised, which was part of the reason why I chose 
to do the system today. One, I was able to get it running within like an hour. It took me like an hour and a half ish to to get it up and running. But Emo Movies having some metadata and and media for it was was a plus. We're gonna click next, and then next, it's going to parse your giant list of games. Well, my giant list of games. Uh, if you have something in the list that you don't want to add, go ahead and click on it and then press delete on your keyboard to remove it from the import list. And once you are ready to import, go ahead and click finish. Once you've done that, LaunchBox will do a little bit of a refresh and start caching all of your images. Keep in mind that this is CPU intensive. I would uh, recommend that you kind of just scroll through your entire list of games as all of the images start to pop in. Until all of the images are popped in, you may get lower performance in LaunchBox for uh, the cache process. Uh, it's just how LaunchBox handles its images. Once that is done, go ahead and right click and open Caprice Forever. This is how, this is what it looks like. Actually, this is, this is what it looks like in a small window. Go ahead and press F10 to scale it up. You can keep pressing F10 to keep scaling, but uh, for me, this is the size of the window that I have. If I do F10, it, uh, again, it kind of goes off the edge of the screen and I kind of want to see all of it so there's really no middle ground except unless you want to scale it yourself but then if you scale it yourself you're going to kind of mess with the aspect ratio so I don't want to mess with the aspect ratio so I'm just going to leave it as is here at the bottom they have options for two disk drives now if you are playing a game with two disk images double click on the game that is the first disc and it will load the disc into slot A. If you click B, you can then navigate to your second disc and add the disc that way. Unfortunately, there is no real documentation for the command line. So there's no way for us to know really what to be able to do easily. Uh, so a lot of what you need to do with Caprice Forever will be manual so unfortunately it's not as elegant as say dos is or retroarch can be where we know the command lines and we can enter everything into launchbox and then have launchbox take care of the nitty gritty unfortunately you're gonna have to take care of that stuff on the user's end but i do want to open it in navigate you guys and show you guys around the help and hints section here was also invaluable and this is in english not in french this was invaluable for me here at the beginning run program from disk unfortunately it didn't teach me everything so that link that i already showed you that wikipedia link uh is also very 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 valuable here where it says emulator let's go on down to settings now, I showed you those links at the bottom of that page, the ROMs. Here is where you would edit those if you've got them. So back in your Amstrad folder, for example, I have those downloaded from the site here. And in the Caprice Forever uh, folder in my ROMs folder is where I have those files located. So this is where you need to put those files in order for Caprice to see them. So if you click on a section, so default OS, where it says select ROM, there's a drop down box down here. And the first box where it says default OS lower ROM, I believe that this is where you would put a CPC 464, 664, or a 6128 ROM. The default basic or upper ROM zero, I believe that's where you just put the basic File basic is a file system, a code system for uh, older computers, even though it also uses a version of DOS, oddly enough. So where it says upper ROM 7, default AMS DOS, you can also select uh, another DOS ROM. So I've got ROM DOS XL version 488. I also have X DOS, uh, so you can select those as well. But 
I've actually found that leaving it at default, default OS, default basic, and default EMS DOS will load most games. I haven't come across a game that wouldn't load using the default OS basic and AMS DOS built in BIOS files. Here on the left, I've left the brand as Amstrad. The device I've left as the CPC 6128UK, but you can change that to a French variant or an early variant of the Amstrad if you would like. And then personally, I've checked the use the 256K memory expansion checkbox. I don't know if that helps or hinders, but I've, I've just checked it myself. Um, again, I don't know if that helps or hinders. Click OK. It'll do a little bit of a refresh, but then we're going to close the Caprice Forever window. Let's go ahead and load a game. I'm going to load Castle Master here. Uh, and because these are games that could have multiple discs uh, or multiple versions, as you can see, a lot of these games have uh, language, different languages or different markers on them. Uh, so I would keep the game's details uh, open and make sure that you are showing the file name so that it shows the name here on the right. Uh, so you don't have to edit all of the names to add in what language something is in or specific markers or things like that. So we're going to double click Castle Master. It's going to go and open Caprice. And it's going to say warning current emulator settings have been overridden to allow for direct launch of this file. Uh, Caprice handles things uh, a little bit differently when you go to direct load. It's kind of using uh, a basic command line parameter. That's how we, we load games, uh, but it's something that LaunchBox handles that the user never has to touch. So that's why I don't know the custom Caprice specific command lines, uh, but it obviously is using basic Windows command line parameter settings. We'll go back into settings and make sure that everything we changed is still here. So the use 256K memory expansion wasn't there or wasn't checked rather, but everything else is staying the same. We're going to click OK. And then we're going to close again so that we can get the do you want to save current settings? And we're going to click yes. Open Castle Master again, go to the settings. OK, it, yeah, this is not checked. So clearly I would I kind of need to find a command line to enable 64K or 256 memory expansion uh, for the settings. That would be something that we do in the, the edit emulators. We would open up Caprice and add that to the command line. But uh, I don't know where it is. If it exists, I guess you'd have to kind of play without it or unless you want to go and manually check it every time. But uh, there you have it. Now, in order to load a game, we're going to go ahead and type in CAT. You're going to hear a little bit of a sound and you're going to see that image in the top left that denotes that it's loading and the sound that you hear in the background. If my sound is working, uh, if you heard that, that was uh, a disk drive or a floppy drive sound uh, to kind of pretend that you have a real floppy drive. And then you see drive A, user zero disk.bin asterisk 1k 103k free so the 1k is the size of the file in the disk image so it's, pretend like you had a floppy disk that you inserted and then you inserted it and then you typed in cat and then it told you everything that you had on that floppy drive so that's what drive a is if we had something in drive b and we typed in cat it would say drive a show you the disk contents and then drive B and then show you the disk contents of those. So we are going to go ahead and type in run parentheses disk and it's not going to always be disk. So if you were loading castle assault, for example, it could be castle AS or something or or CA. It doesn't necessarily need to be disk every single time. That's why we run the cat command to list all of the items on that disk image. Sometimes a disk image will also have multiple items. So in order to play your game, make sure that you are choosing the uh, file that ends in dot bin. So run parentheses disk will load the disk dot bin file on this image. And then we're going to hit enter. 
it's going to play that disc at loading sound and then it's going to start loading your game now this can take a little bit of uh, a little time so keep that in mind it's not super fast but you can see here at the bottom that it's loading and moving through the disc image and then here we go castle master if you need to know what inputs it is using if you type go to inputs at the top and go to keyboard mapping or you want to map a controller you can do that all in that uh, menu here and there we go please select we're gonna hit one to select English or enter uh, let's play as the princess all right so castle master has been loaded uh, so you will note that it, it doesn't look uh, uh, super fantastic uh, this is an, an, a very old PC from Europe that didn't last all that long but there are some really interesting games that you can play on the Amstrad CPC so that's going to be it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you get the Amstrad CPC running in LaunchBox, primarily those commands and how to work with it. Unfortunately, we can't control Amstrad CPC or the Caprice uh, forever emulator completely, fully. Uh, a lot of these, even though this emulator was updated, I mean, this emulator was updated as of 17 days ago. But it is in beta. It, it is probably made by one person, I believe. Um, and it is trying to emulate old, old, old systems. So please keep that in mind that things can get better or change. Or that they are just going to naturally be archaic due to the nature of the system that it is trying to emulate. If this tutorial helps you get this up and running on your system, though, please leave us a comment in the comment section below. Uh, or if like, you need to ask us questions, if we didn't cover anything specifically in this tutorial or kind of glossed over something a little bit uh, and you need clarification, please leave that in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if it helps you out or subscribe for more videos and shows like RSS in the future. Jason has also been doing lots of uh, videos for you guys with himself in them uh primarily it has been me it was him and then i took over and he's kind of been starting to get back into it by doing developer sessions where he answers your questions talks about old games or what's going on in his life he's been doing live development sessions where he codes for you live over on twitch.tv slash jason david carr that link will also now be in the description as well so we are doing and expanding a lot. We're doing a lot more types of videos for you guys. So we hope that you appreciate all the work that we are doing on Launchbox and our YouTube channel. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.